Hey guys, so this video is something that I've wanted to do for a while now. A lot of the stuff that we've done at work are involving driving high power LEDs and I figured that that might be an interesting topic to go into because you don't see a lot of information out there on it. So I'm going to kind of go over starting from like the most simple to some more advanced circuits and just kind of discuss why you might or might not choose one or the other. I have a blog post on this as well. It'll be in the description. So let's jump into the first circuit. Everybody knows how to do a simple LED indicator circuit. If it's something that's low power, just like a little indicator LED, you can drive it directly from a five volt or even a 3.3 volt logic microcontroller just for completion's sake using V equals IR. We have five volts coming in from the microcontroller output in here. So five minus the forward voltage is two, and that equals I times the 220 ohm resistor. So our current is equal to the five divided by 220, which I think comes out to around 13 milliamps. So again, nothing special there. Everybody knows how an indicator uh, circuit is done. But now let's say, what if you wanna have a high power LED being driven at say half an amp? That's way more than you can drive directly from the microcontroller. Let's say you wanna have four or five of those what's kind of the easiest option to do from there. So if heat really isn't a big concern and it's not battery powered, so power loss isn't a huge concern, easiest way to do it is just with a linear based circuit. So a linear circuit when it comes to driving LEDs is the excess voltage that is dropped is dissipated as heat. So you don't have any switching or anything else to boost the efficiency. So with this, we have a set of five LEDs with a 12 volt rail. So using V equals IR, we have 12 minus, now we have five LEDs with a two volt forward voltage, and we want to drive it at 0.5 amps times our resistor, which is down here. And this comes out to four ohms. So if we throw a four ohm resistor here, that allows us to drive this circuit and we can even PWM it from the MOSFET gate. The big issue with this is this resistor has to dissipate a lot of power. So using P equals, or actually let's use P equals I squared times R to get our power, I squared we know is 0.5 squared times our resistance, which is four which that means our power is one watt. So one, one watt might not seem like a lot of power to dissipate, and in a lot of cases it isn't, but that's something that you have to keep in mind. And an easy way to help with this issue is you can do something like this, and I do this a lot in high power LED circuits, is if you split up the resistors at the top and the bottom of the strands, and cut down the resistance in half, we still have a total resistance of four ohms, but now that heat is split up into two different resistors. It lets you use a lower sized resistor, so not as big of a package, and when you lay out your PCB, it lets you split up where the hot spots on the board are. So now if you're driving LEDs, you don't care a lot about heat or battery usage, but you want some added conveniences, your other option is to use linear LED drivers. So basically internally, all these are is just a variable resistance inside each one of these. So all of the heat that would be dissipated as if you had a resistor here is just dissipated inside this chip. That's really important because whatever you are going to dissipate on these strands, the chip has to be able to handle it. These chips can get pretty hot. This example on the left is a eight channel PWM based driver. You can adjust the brightness based on these four channels and they're tied two to each. What's nice with this is it has a temperature fold back so it'll limit the current as it heats up. It'll have an external resistance 
to set the nominal current of the strands together. A lot of times if you use drivers like this, you'll have an unbalanced strand at the end. Adding a resistor here allows some of this power to be dissipated on the resistor instead of back at this driver. Helps again, making sure that that driver doesn't dissipate too much heat. And then this driver over here is more high power driver. Basically works identical to the MOSFET, so you can PWM this enable pin, but you don't have the external resistor. The resistor is inside here. It just again depends if you're driving it linearly and you want to save money Typically the MOSFET approach will be the cheapest because internally that's what these are is kind of a MOSFET with a adjustable resistor. But if you need either a lot of LEDs or just the convenience of a driver, that's a great option to go with as well. So if you're driving LEDs, whether they're high power or not, and you can't afford to have any heat generated or at least excess heat generated, and you need to maximize the power usage, there's really only one option, and that's to use a true switching constant current driver. You can have them either made specifically for LEDs like this one, or just a constant current supply in general. The advantage of this is it's not dissipating that excess voltage and power as heat. It uses an internal switching regulator to supply a true constant current to these LEDs. And depending on which one you pick, you can get the efficiencies upwards of 80, 90, 95% to where really your main power draw is the LEDs themselves instead of that resistor or resistor network dissipating that power. They make them in step down, which this is, so it goes from 12 volts, and since this strand is around 10 volts, it'll be outputting around 10 volts, or they have them in step ups, which are really convenient, but a little bit less efficient. So you could have five volts coming in here, and then it would step that voltage up to the 10 volts avoiding you having to have a higher voltage rail to start. And this driver is like the linear ones in that it has an enable pin or a control pin, which lets you PWM it for brightness. An advantage of a lot of the switching drivers out there, this one actually is not, but if you PWM that control line, instead of it outputting a true step signal to the LEDs, so on off, on off, it'll actually just adjust the current so you'll have just a lower brightness, but it's smooth instead of stepped like you would get with a MOSFET or most of the linear drivers. But again, there's tons of these out there. It's just if you decide to go with the switching topography or a linear, the overwhelming reason to do that is heat and power. Of course, the big drawback with anything like this is it's a switching regulator. So there's gonna be a lot of noise and there is going to be a lot more difficulties or intricacies at least on the schematic creation and especially in the PCB layout. And this of course is just super simplistic. There would need to be input caps, output caps. And if there are several of these on a board, you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of filter to make sure that that switching noise doesn't couple with any of the other drivers on the board. So the final thing I want to talk about in this video, I talk about it in the LED troubleshooting video also, and I'm going to go into more depth in the blog just because I don't want to spend too much time on this video on it, is we've done it in a couple board layouts. Basically, if you have to drive LEDs at a high power, but the strands are really mix matched to where you have different colors or different models, part numbers, and some of them are really long, and some of them are really short, pretty difficult to drive them. We had the ability to give off a decent bit of heat on this design because we were allocated a big heat sink on the back, but if you're trying to drive two LEDs that have a total forward voltage of six, uh, six or so volts, and you're driving it from 24 volts at a amp, that's 18 volts you have to drop at a amp. So you're dissipating 18 watts of power in each of these strands, that's not possible. But to drive them all from switching regulators would have meant that we would have been required to have 
a minimum of nine, a maximum of 16 switching regulators on a single board, which that's an EMC nightmare. You can, of course, do it, but it would have been a lot more expensive and a lot more time consuming to do the layout. So what we decided to do is we have 24 volts coming in, the longer strands, we drove them directly from the 24 volts using the MOSFET method that I talked about earlier. And this is just an example of how we did it. On the actual layout, we did that technique where we split up the resistors throughout the strands to help dissipate the heat more evenly on the board itself. So we could drive the ones at 24 volts nice and easy. Then the shorter strands, what we did is picked a few specific voltage rails. So here, 16, 13, and then seven volts, where it matched the total forward voltage of the LEDs pretty, pretty accurately. And we used a few switching regulators to drop down the 24 volts to those voltage rails pretty efficiently. Of course, we're still dissipating some power in these resistors, because it's still a linear drive on this end, but the fact that we're going from the 24 volts to the six or seven, one of those labels is wrong, the majority of the power would have been dissipated going from the 24 to the six volts. Since we're using a switching regulator, we have 90 plus percent efficiency, which is a night and day difference from how it would have been driving it completely linearly from 24 volts. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over. Just to recap, if you can't give off any excess heat and you need it to be incredibly efficient, a switching driver for each strand, that's really the only option. If you don't care about heat and you don't really care about power loss, then a linear topography, whether it's a dedicated driver or a MOSFET, those are both really good options. And then if you have a tricky situation, you can use a combination of them both or an upstream regulator that's a switch mode driver to drop down the voltage to a better match for the strands and you kind of get the best of both worlds. So again, I have a much more in-depth write-up on this on the blog. It'll be linked down in the description, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and let me know any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and I will see you in the next video.